describe that that emotional roller coaster of a game to, to make sure you guys get to to play together at least one more game? Uh, it's playoff football. Uh, that's how I uh, kind of expected to go, and that's how it tonight. I'm glad to come out on top. You guys have won so many blowouts this, this season. Uh, what was it like to be in a, in a game like you know, the back and forth, back and forth quarter with so much on the line? What was it like to kind of show that you can win these types of games? Uh, it, it just shows a lot of character of, of the team, and you know, guys remain together, and uh, we're talking the entire time about you know we know what we need to do, and uh, not kind of crumbling under the pressure, but really thriving and, and making sure uh, that we just rally together. It was really cool to see uh, the whole team respond to that. Uh, but for you, Eric, same thing. Just, just uh, how wild was this game? And, and uh, you know, you know the if you come out uh, on top. The, the emotion you guys must be feeling right now. How, how awesome is this? It's, it's extremely awesome because just I thought it was like a good start for us, especially for offense. Just everything's not going our way. Three and outs here. Three and out one series. Then we get a drive going. Then another three and out after that. So it was just kind of frustrating. But I think like towards the end. Every th everybody just rallied together and we came out victorious. Eric, what changed? The last two touchdown drives were like two plays long each. What? What? How'd you guys get going so fast? How'd you flip that switch? Um, I mean, it just just guys just believing in, in one of each other. Just because before we just huddle up, telling everybody what they're supposed to do. Like if we just do this, execute, then everything would work out. So I think it was just everybody believing in one of each other and everybody doing their job. Is there something you saw when you right before when you threw the long one to, to Andrew down the sideline? Did you know you could take that one there? Yeah, um, just it was so the play was like with Dre Razor, so we just had a ten yard in by the slot, then a post by the outside. So I'm pretty much just trying to see what the safety do. So if the safety just kind of flies over, I'm trying to basically hit that post, and that's what I did right there. And Andrew did a great job winning his route and catching the ball. Well, what was your reaction when uh, when Sam hit it outside and then broke that tackle? Relief. I was just I was just happy. I was happy for Sam and just happy for the team because that was huge for us because um, they just scored that two uh, two pointer. So everybody was just kind of like down, just thinking like, oh, maybe the game over. But everybody on our team on the sidelines, offense, we had relief. And then once he finally got in, it was just kind of like a relief, like. Ooh. <laughs> That 29 yard run you had to that, that game when you drive, uh, you were almost kind of bottled up there, but you were able to shift out of it. What did you kind of see when you were freaking contained there? Um, I really just, I was just trying to make a play really just because they did a really good job of just covering everybody, having everybody covered down. So I just tried to scramble, uh, uh, spin and then just try to find one of my receivers downfield, but they had them all covered. So then by then, I just knew I had to make a put of my legs. And just from there, I was just trying to move, bob and weave, just make sure I don't get tackled. And then just um, when I got enough yards and field goal range, I thought uh, just stepped out of bounds. Eric, a really efficient day for you, 21 of 25. How did you maintain your composure when the offense was kind of sputtering for a little while there? Um, I'm just... Just, just gotta have belief. You just can't, just can't get rattled. Cause as a quarterback, like things gonna go different ways that you don't like expect. So you just gotta make sure you keep your composure, keep the team composed. Because as a, uh, uh, you never know, like one big, play, one big play can happen and that can spark the whole thing. So I just try to make sure I keep my composure and help this team whatever I can do. How proud are you of that 21 of 25 stat line? Uh, I'm super proud because I know. Last week, I didn't do so very well throwing the ball. And this week, I want to come out, practice, uh, especially during practice. My coach, Reader, uh, talked to me about ripping the ball because he pulled out and rip it enough. So I just wanted to make sure I was accurate and give my receivers a chance to, so they can rack. What was it like uh, when, they, when they had the, the go-ahead two-point conversion? You know, it's your first you know, close game. It's your you know, it's a, it's a playoff game. What was kind of going through you guys? You know, Go time, which would do this. What were you thinking? Uh, I mean, well, it's, it's, it wasn't like nothing new to me because like, I've been in moments like that before in high school. Uh, I remember like my senior year, um, the team went up ahead and we had to go when it the game when it drives. So that stuff don't really rattle me like that because I know I'm like 
this is what I pray like this is what I pray for. This is like what you want. This is what you want as a quarterback and as a college player. You want to be in those moments. So I was just living in the moment, just try to do, uh, just yeah. <laughs> Kenner, what do you think about this next week? You guys have been in this position before hosting a semifinal game, so what are your thoughts on the upcoming? Uh, big game, and uh, we'll be prepared and you know, watch some film on these guys and see what they're all about and get ready to go. Being able to host a home playoff game, how, how important is that for your team? Uh, it's, really, it's just really cool, I think, just for everybody to, to stay home and you know, get to have family and friends and, and fans just out on the red and I think it's really special to, to play football on the red and it's nice. We like to do that. Did you, did you guys watch the, the game last night between Weaver and Maine at all? Yeah. yeah. What did you guys think? Just from, just from watching them? Pretty, uh, pretty good team. They, uh, pretty good physical defense. Got some players that fire around, especially like in the back position. I thought they flew around pretty well. And I thought their offense was good. But you can, yeah, no, they're solid. Everything you want in, in an offense, good quarterback. Good run game and guys who may play out on the outside. So, one more question. I mean, if, if you haven't been around Eastern playoff football for uh, a long period, which Miss Lynn Hickey hasn't, this is. Uh, she said, "What are you trying to do? Give me a give me a heart attack." Selfishly, I said, "This is this is what we do, and this is how we do it against a great UC Davis opponent." Uh, we knew they were going to throw wrinkles at us. Uh, second time around, we threw some wrinkles at them. Uh, they, we went down swinging, they went down swinging. We just threw one more punch than them. And uh, it was back and forth, 14 to 14 and a half, getting the ball. Then we threw the pick on the first play of the uh, second half. And, uh, and we, heard, held, we held steady. You know, we, we had three interceptions in the first half, but couldn't capitalize on any of them. One was on the last play of the second quarter. Uh, which naturally uh, was maybe the play of the game, but then you argue after halftime there's about seven or eight other the plays of the game, uh, and, and you could you could go down the list. Eric Berry, a Andre Slider kicking that ball out of the end zone. Uh, the the last kickoff that goes unnoticed, but they started the 25. There's not an op opportunity to return the football. They got to go 20 or 75 yards in 26 seconds with one timeout. Uh, Jimmy Towns with a strip. Uh, and I don't know who picked it up the last uh, play of the game. Uh, Sam McPherson with a big touchdown run. And you go on and on and on and on. Um, you know, again, Mr. Boston had a, a big catch, uh, touchdown. I, I just, it, it, that's what teams do. We're, we're not individuals. Uh, we're a collective bunch that like to play around, uh, play with each other, uh, and, and work with each other, work for each other. And I, I just, I, I never envisioned this 25 years ago being in this seat, being in the Final Four hosting a semifinal as a head football coach here at Eastern Washington University. It just, it, 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 it really gives me chills. Uh, the tears are real, but this is an absolute blast. Uh, Eric Berrier is, is Johnny on the spot when he needed to be a backup quarterback with seven backups going into a national semifinal from Eastern Washington University. It's incredible. That's who we are and that's how we do things. So uh, we like to make it hard, uh, but when we make it hard for ourselves, that uh, you know, uh, iron sharpens iron. So uh, just proud of this bunch. Can't can't say enough about them. We'll find out uh, when uh, we play. We know where we're going to play next week. We'll find when I think later on this evening. Uh, but right now we're just going to enjoy this moment. Their decision to, to go for two, take the lead. What was your reaction as, as a coach? There must be some sort of like they got some some gusto. And then what are you thinking? What's your message to your team in those in less than ninety seconds to play? Yeah, uh, Sam. Great question. Uh, I'm, I'm probably going for two on the road. That's kind of the deal, right? You're, you're behind. You score to get it within uh, one. Do you kick it and go to, to potentially overtime or or do you uh, go for two? And on the road, that's the whole deal, right? You go for, you're down on the road, you go for two. Um, you're down at home, you go for one and push it overtime with your with your fans on board. Uh, you know, another trickeration, they had about three or four trickeration plays and they seemed to all work except for the one before halftime. Uh, we sniffed that out with Chris Ojo. I thought it was a great call, but I also knew that we had three timeouts with, I think, a minute 26-ish or whatever it was uh, left. And I knew at worst case, we'd probably be at about the 20. For Roldan, we knew his range was going to be about the 30. So we had to, we had to muster up 50 yards uh, in a minute and, and 20 plus seconds with three timeouts, uh, knowing we have four downs to work with. So I liked our chances. I liked our odds, if that was the case. Um, they, they did a heck of a job, obviously, uh, executing the two-point play to get themselves up by one. And uh, Eric Perrier makes uh, 
a hell of a play early in that drive, and then Sam McPherson caps it off with a touchdown run. So uh, I, we envisioned, we talked about it with the defensive staff as I was on the phones. We predicted that they were probably going to go for two, so we were ready for a fourth down call. So it wasn't something we were uh, uh, unaware of or unprepared for. How about the run by Barrier? I mean, it, it could have gone either way. Could have gone either way. You know, he, he got out of harm's way a few times tonight. You know, he got into harm's way a few times. Ooh, that's, you live, you know. Uh, it's the same, same, uh, same palpitations I had with Vernon Adams here as an old line coach where, oh, oh, I mean, you, you get a mixed emotions in, in a matter of about eight or ten seconds of a play. And uh, and the guy's a gamer. The guy's a gamer. And just look at the stats, he was 22 or 26 and wouldn't have felt that way. Uh, but the guy guy played great. Coach Reeder did a great job putting him in successful situations. Run game helps, obviously. And Sam McPherson was a big part of that. Dennis Merritt, again, had, a, had, some, had some good yardage. Uh, a guy that uh, came in, stepped in, had a big catch, almost for a touchdown from Sam. And uh, it's uh, Eric Berry smiled, like I said, going to that last drive. I said, you got three timeouts. We need a field goal. Uh, we're not looking for six, but if we get six, let's make it happen. And uh, that was the first smile I saw all night. You know, it was almost like he was grinding on himself. He said, relax, kid. Don't make this happen. So this is his legitimate first comeback victory uh, in that situation in an Eagle uniform. I can't be prior of the kid. I think Davis scored 44 points 10 times this year, at least 44 in a game. You guys held him under 30 twice. What did you think of the defensive effort well, today? I tell, tell you what, first off, Coulter, uh, we go into halftime, and, and I'm thinking to myself, we faced the Davis team, top 10 program, twice. And we have held Jake Mayer to zero passing touchdowns in six quarters. That, that, that's almost impossible, number one. Um, now, Gilliam has, has had a field day in those six quarters. But uh, you, you can't hold Jake Mayer down. Uh, and we knew that going into the second half. And again, Keelan Doss was on uh, point with about four or five just incredible catches. And it, I didn't even think twice. I mean, the whole stand, oh, I mean, I, we're just used to Keelan making three or four acrobatic catches. And we just wish they're not on third down to move the sticks. Um, but uh, it, it's hard to hold that outfit. Uh, I think the elements do play. I do. Uh, we talked about it. it's in advantage. It's not the advantage. It's in advantage when a team has a 70 degree weather to practice in, and then all of a sudden they come up here and it's 22, and uh, hits feel a little different. Uh, plastic sounds a little different. Uh, guys talk a little different. You know, guys kind of non-verbally show different signs. So uh, a great outfit, and that was a, certainly a, uh, not the, the the team we saw a month ago. Uh, played stout on defense, made plays, had a ton of tackles for loss, too many in fact. They have five sacks on our offensive line, so we've got to pick some things up and get uh, uh, get some things worked out, but but win in advance at this stage. It doesn't matter how, how ugly it is. Win in advance, and that's what we did today. At the end of the game, you were down there hugging your wife and, and hugging your kids, and you got a little bit emotional. You mentioned the tears. Where where does that come from for you? I just, the, the journey... Uh, if you got about three months, Brenna, we can talk about all that's gone on. Uh, and the journey started, I'm talking about just the mini journey in August on. Uh, the 22 month journey has, uh, has uh, aged me about 20 years, but it's all worth it. You know, uh, kids are amazing. Uh, the administration, the, the fans were incredible tonight. I mean, it, it was, they were heard. It was, it was awesome. Uh, their energy helped us. And it didn't happen to be just on third down. I mean, that crowd was better than I had anticipated. Being in a lot of these games at home uh, with school being out. And so a credit goes to those folks that rallied the troops, those folks that you know brought themselves to the seats. But my wife's an alum. I'm an alum. Uh, we, we love and, and know Cheney. It, it's just I, I, you couldn't write this script. And I, I, I want to keep the pen in the hand. I want the the, 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 uh, the uh, just to continue to write an unwritten script because that those are the best scripts when you're reading things it's not as authentic and this is truly authentic and uh, the only bad thing about the family is tank wasn't uh, present tonight he was at a birthday party so he chose an overnight birthday party at a friend's house which i'm going to talk to him when he gets home um, <laughs> about but uh, kids have priorities and uh, we weren't one of them today but he gets to see us next week uh 22 26 for eric uh, just how from your perspective, how difficult is, is that kind of performance to pull off in an FCS quarterfinal? Oh, it's incredibly important you know, and, and uh, tough to do. You talk about 22 and 26, my math's not great, uh, but that tells me it's about 75 percent, uh, 75 to 80 percent. There's my math guy right there. He's saying above 80, 82 and a half. 
Uh, that's impressive. And we took some shots downfield, but we knew they were going to challenge our receivers a bit. We knew we were going to have to create separation. Uh, so we took advantage of a few things underneath that we thought uh, could, could manufacture into 10 and 12 and 14 yard gains. Um, and 22 and 26, I would have never guessed. You know, you talk about a percentage, no matter what that percentage is, numbers don't lie, but they tell a story. And the story was tonight, he was, uh, he being Eric Berrier was con consistent um, and put the ball where it needed to be. Receivers made plays. Terrence Grady, probably the catch of the night when he grabbed that first touch, I was almost behind him in the end zone. But that's a kid that's grinded for five years. That redshirted his third year on campus and waited behind three NFL guys. And so, uh, these guys are giddy. These guys are, are willing and able uh, to do whatever they need to do for their teammates. And uh, you don't get that every day. So that's the other uh, piece of the emotions, knowing that what these guys give up uh, on a daily basis to be able to do uh, what we do as coaches and mentors, but also their, their teammates. One more question. You guys get to host next week. Um, just how... Uh, how cool is it for you to be able to host all the way through the playoffs? Well, it's awesome. I mean, that's what, that's why you have the season you do to be able to have hopefully home field advantage. Um, and it worked out this way in 2010. We shouldn't have hosted in the semis. We ended up hosting in the semis. It was on a Friday night. Who will we'll know how this plays out. Uh, and uh, that's the way it goes. You know, Villanova, I think they upset uh, uh, Appy State, I think, on the road, if I'm not mistaken, in the quarters. And so Villanova ended up coming here. Uh, we would have traveled across the country. And so things play out. Uh, and there's a reason for everything. Things play out uh, certain ways for certain reasons. But uh, to be able to host it, if you have the choice, Brenda, yeah, obviously we want to host in front of our fans on the red. The red is a special place. And when I got put in in 2010, again, I don't know, my, my numbers guy back there, um, it's not quite 80%, but it's pretty close as far as the win percentage on that red, whether it's in the regular season or in the postseason. And so it's an incredible venue. It's fun to have. Uh, we're unique, and we play unique when those uh, playoff times come around. Could you talk to us real quick about the way this, this season has kind of put you where it is? And you talk about the last three months, how difficult are you? You're talking about a team that's, that's lost a starting quarterback, who's the Walter Payton Award mm -hmm. finalist and everything that Gage has done. And then you talk about how banged up this team has been. And then on top of that, playing in the weather, you, you guys have done all of that. How do you just put into words everything that you guys have done to get to this moment and it's not done? Well, Sam, some credit and a lot of it's got to go to Nate Barry, our strength and conditioning coach. Um, he does a great job getting the pulse on the guys, seeing what we need on Sundays when we come back. Um, he's done a great job facilitating. We hired him uh, in the late spring, early summer, and he's he's done wonders. Amir Owens was here before, and uh, we've taken a, a, a another step ahead in terms of finding out nutritionally what guys need, uh, kind of get them on, on, on specific programs to get them to bounce back to give their all the next week. Uh, not just Gage, but uh, we've had left tackles go down. Uh, we've had uh, multi, I don't know how many safeties now have gone down, and we just find a way. Uh, it's just incredible. We, we've been healthy in certain spots to allow us to continue uh, things, but you know as well as I do, you go and play who you have and who's healthy, and so we don't worry about who we don't have. We, we love them up. We ask them to coach them up. Uh, we, it seems like we got half our team in street clothes when we get out to a Friday walkthrough, you know, and a lot of those guys, unfortunately, are seniors. So they've played their last ball, and all of a sudden their season ends up being short. Uh, and so I think it's a uh, respect factor, those guys that are filling in and having an opportunity to play uh, in absence of those guys have, have done a marvelous, marvelous job, and they haven't thought about it. The closer we can close the gap from ones to the next guy up, um, that's our job as coaches to develop those players. We've done it over time. So, uh, again, we're, we're a selfless team uh, that, that does selfless acts that, uh, you know, gives Miss Hickey a little bit more uh, more than she bargained for as far as the uh, blood pressure is concerned in the playoffs. But uh, you got to get used to that.